Hello everyone, there seems to be this Tesla plague all over the car industry. Big screens, no buttons. In the last few years I have seen hundreds of ambitious projects, most of them ended up under the wheels. Pun intended. I have seen pieces of wood tree made into buttons or screen projections everywhere. And now, because of CES, we get to see new, interesting, ambitious projects and I can't wait to see them fall or fail. Drivers need their eyes on the road, not on fancy big screen with OLED technology. So of course I have mixed feelings about the new Mercedes-Benz MBUX hyperscreen. Is it a flex or it can be useful on the road? The hyperscreen will be installed in the 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQS. It isn't just a screen to show you how fast you're going over the speed limit. It has a complex architecture underneath the screen that works with, you guessed it, artificial intelligence. It learns about you. It knows when to show you relevant information depending of the time of the day, day of the week, traffic or location. All this information is right on the screen when it's needed so you don't have to navigate into the complex menu of the older MBUX screens. In theory, this hyperscreen should be easier to use and, as I've said before, less time on the screen, more time on the road. And this time is not just about the driver that has control over the screens, the passenger gets one as well. A beautiful 12.3 inches OLED with 7 profiles, haptic feedback, gesture and voice navigation, Bluetooth streaming and other streaming services and, of course, because you need it in 2021 or 2022, the TV services. The EQS will have a bottom sensor for the right seat. If the seat is empty, the screen will display some nice stars, the symbols of the Mercedes-Benz, similar to the F1 livery. That's why it's OLED, so it looks great when the pixels are not lit. The beautiful part of this system is that it gets better over time. It will work better after you put some numbers in the mileage counter than the day you bought the car. What does artificial intelligence mean on a screen? It is much more complex than a simple Hey Mercedes. Now you get this zero layer menu where you can have widgets on the screen for the usual call, navigation or multimedia. Stuff like massage that in the past you had to go through the menu will now appear on the screen when you're driving for a time, let's say one or two hours. If you usually make a call every Tuesday at 6 p.m., MBUX UX will show you an icon just for that call when it's Tuesday close to 6 p.m. If you raise the car thanks to the air suspension because you needed more ground clearance, the car will save the GPS coordinates so the next time you'll be there, the same location, the car will raise by itself. Some hyper facts for the hyper screen. It has 141 centimeters and it's covered in Gorilla Glass end to end for maximum scratch resistance. It has 12 actuators for precise haptic feedback, so when you touch it, it feels like pressing a button or similar to the Touch ID on the iPhone. The system running all the screen has eight cores processor with 24 gigabyte of RAM storage. And also, I don't care about all these numbers. If my eyes are on the screen for more than one second at a time to change the temperature inside, it's a waste of money and it's a safety concern. On the other hand, we have BMW, which celebrates 20 years of iDrive. The latest iteration can be seen on iX, the flagship electric SUV. Looks nice and minimalistic. Glad they are keeping the little knob wheel. For now, we only have some footage with this system. No demo or walkthroughs. Nice video, by the way, BMW. Panasonic is showcasing a really nice camera that works with Wi-Fi and you can use it for reversing, especially if you have a trailer. A new head-up display technology with augmented reality seems a bit sci-fi, but the technology already exists, so it's just a matter of years until we see it on the car. Also, I am in love with this wireless charger that will automatically put the coil in the perfect position for fast charging your mobile phone. That's it for now. We are covering digital CS this year, so stay close for more content. There is plenty of stuff going on there. See you.